welcome to SVG TV's news for Wednesday, January 18, 2023. I'm Triska Campbell with the details. The Ministry of Agriculture will roll out this year a 10 million US, US dollar program funded by the World Bank. This is according to Minister of Agriculture Sabota Caesar during the API Morning SVG program today. Minister Caesar noted that hundreds of farmers will benefit greatly from the World Bank funded program. So the farmers were saying, we know of the fertilizer for Morocco. We're here to for that assistance. We know of the, the fertilizer, the urea from Venezuela. We're here for that assistance. And this year, we are going to unfold a 10 million US dollars program, a grant, uh, a program, sorry, from the, from the World Bank. And that program, we are going to see farmers receiving animals, fertilizer, pesticides, herbicides. The Agriculture Minister said the ministry is scheduled to launch a labor program for farmers on January 23rd, which will also be of significant assistance to them. Whereby farm, farm workers would be registered, farmers would be registered as well, and we will have teams going out in the morning to the different farms. So if you are a dash yield farmer, you go to Lacroix, you register. If you are a farm worker, you don't own land, whereas we say those work with people, you go and you register, and we will form teams of three, 12 teams in Maracua, and we will have supervisors, and on the morning from 8.30 to one o'clock, you will go, you will work, we'll submit the um, time sheets and you will be paid. And that is significant assistance to the farmers. And importantly, you will not receive labor support to work lands already under cultivation. Mm -hmm. You have to bring fresh lands under production because we have that market in Miami that we have to get into. And there is a discussion about the extra regional trade, particularly to Europe, because there's a huge market for Dachin in France and in the United Kingdom and also markets in, in Germany. So it's a really exciting period. As I said what earlier... About, what about ginger? Ginger, ginger as well. The, the price for ginger is pretty low at the moment. And Minister Caesar said that before the end of February, the government and St. Vincent and the Grenadines will renew the Memorandum of Understanding with the government of Grenada for the exportation of more animals to the Spice Isle. The MOU, which was first signed in 2014, was to formalize the trade in cattle and other agricultural commodities and aimed at bringing in over 400,000 EC dollars yearly. I know I get the messages to the love notes that Sabi is sending away all the cattle. And what we haven't heard as yet is that on the boat, there's the only cattle going, sheep, goats, and pigs as well. And uh, it is our duty as a ministry to find markets. And uh, before the end of next month, we are going to renew that memorandum of understanding with the government and people of Grenada so that more animals will go. But we also have to ensure that when you go to the butcher stall, we have to ensure that we have food security and food safety in the country. And food security, as I always notice, that the meat must be affordable, mm -hmm. available, and accessible. And we definitely need significant help and assistance in order to improve the production platform. Meanwhile, Minister Caesar said issues with the local livestock population were raised with the Morocco delegation who was recently here on a one-week visit. I want to thank the government and people of Morocco for the, the work they continue to do, not only in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, but also in other countries in the, in the OECS. Because importantly, I see St. Vincent and the Grenadines as a part of a sub-regional ecosystem. So when other islands around St. Vincent and the Grenadines, when they receive benefits, 
it augurs well for the entire production platform that we are aspiring to, to develop and to advance. So coming out of the meeting, we were invited to visit the country and uh, some of the issues that we addressed touched and concern livestock production. On Tuesday afternoon, the Ministry of Agriculture hosted a consultation with farmers of North Central Windward at the South Rivers Methodist School. On radio today, Prime Minister and Area Representative Dr. Ralph Gansav said he was present at the consultation with the farmers, which the farmers raised a number of issues of concern, including roads, pretty larceny, and the attitude of police officers in the area. Kim Gensav said the meet, uh, which had a large turnout, uh, was very fruitful. And the indifference and lackadaisical attitude of many police officers who, you know, in Connery and Georgetown, whom people made reports to about Frida Larceny and uh, the, my my security team who were there, they, they were, not, I wouldn't say shocked, but they were very disappointed that their colleagues, some of them, some of course have done well, but some of them, some police officers seem to have a, a civil service mentality now. They just want to stay place, stay put. But the reason why it's called a police, you, you have to do policing. You can't sit down by your desk, by in the office. That's more civil servants' job. You know what I mean, Colville? Yes, I understand what you say. So they, they, and of course, people sp gave many examples and spoke in colorful terms. And there were many suggestions as to how we can deal with this or that issue. It was a very fruitful meeting. I, I enjoyed it very much. I always enjoy meetings um, with the farmers and the fisher folk and and the working people. Um, generally, they, they, they always bring up a number of experiences and ideas for you to reflect upon and good suggestions to us to how to deal with this or that practical problem. Over 150 youth across the nation between the age group of 18 to 34 will benefit from the National Support for Internship Training and Employment On-Site Program, which is funded by the Republic of China on Taiwan and the government of SVG at a cost of approximately U.S. $515,000. The program, which will be launched at the Methodist Church Hall tomorrow, aims to better equip the nation's youth to participate in a new and dynamic global space. The on-site participants will be placed at private sector businesses or firms across, the wide, across a wide range of industries and will receive a monthly stipend that is commensurate with their levels of achieved education and skill set that is pre-secondary, secondary, post-secondary post and university. Discussing what on-site program entails, Prime Minister Dr. Afghan Savs on NBC Radio Today said that his government continues to find ways to empower the nation's youth through the, uh, through the, through the implementation of a different program. It's a variant of the yes and the set. Okay. But this is, this is on-site with, with workers. Uh, with uh, people working in the private sector now, attachments to the private sector, and also state entities too. I'm talking about productive state entities so that they get some working experience. We have always had, and I'll explain about that tomorrow when I speak, uh, there are many very important youth-related programs and youth empowerment programs. We are always with the Yes, and also with the set for private sector persons to hire them and get a tax deduction now for if they're hired, provided they're not hired 
Um, and it, in the case of the yes, it's very difficult for them to hire them simply because unless unless they hire them and and and, and pay the minimum wage now, um, at least. But but nobody has taken up in any significant way that particular option and also the for the set. Um, so this is a this is a special program, which is going to be run out of the Ministry of Economic Planning. Application for the on-site program is available at various locations and online. The deadline for submission of applications and supporting documents is Friday, January twentieth. <music> An, envi an environmental organization in Miro is concerned about the non-existent solid waste dump site on the island, which needs to be urgently addressed. The organization is now initiating research to ensure the proper disposal of garbage on the island. We hear more in this report. For a waste management project, because our island doesn't have designated CWS is not present in the community of Miro. So we pretty much illegally dump in terms of waste management. So we need a more sustainable option for that. So we're looking to get funding that allows us to do the research to determine what's the best option for us in terms of waste management for our community. Marion Isaacs, Executive Director of We Are Miro Incorporated. Isaacs visited the area two months ago where dumping takes place on private lands on the southern part of the island between the Salt Pond and Saline Bay. She revisited the area one week ago and observed that excessive dumping has worsened. I came to the garbage site in October of 2022 and there was little garbage and since the tourist season has started this is the amount of garbage that has been generated within that two months span. Most of this is from the yachts and the cruise ships and trade winds. The island itself, the village itself is not accumulating as much as the visiting yachts and cruises and the resorts. Isaacs pointed out that the hole was dug to dump garbage, but it has not been properly utilized. If it business on Union Island came over, buried what was above the surface, and dug us a new hole. This is the hole that has been dug about three months ago, probably. It's either September or August this hole was dug. And surprisingly, the hole still has capacity for holding more garbage, but all of the garbage has made it out on to the surface and not in the hole. And this is what's happening. So anticipate that within the next three months, this line of garbage is going to extend even further. Before dumping took place at the area, villagers burnt the garbage. But now, Isaac says, illegal dumping is uncontrollable. We Are Miro Incorporated was part of a UNDP Jeff Small Grants training late last year on capacity building and project writing. The organization is hoping to source funding from Jeff Small Grants to holistically address the solid waste management problem on the island. We need to think more in terms of just, or oh, how do you, how do we get our garbage off island? Now I think there are more sustainable options that looks at recycling, reusing, repurposing, and that's the kind of education that we need to give to villagers, we need to give to our tourists, we need to have our investors when they come in and they have their developmental plan that it should also incorporate how they're going to address their waste issues. Like these are things that need to be taken into consideration, and even their energy issues because we have a small power station that every time an investor come the island suffers because it just doesn't generate enough electricity to meet our needs and their needs so you know like just their planning and it being approved by our central planning need to take all of these factors into consideration Larissa Pugsley Kid, SVG TV News a million dollars has been allocated in the 2023 budget for the beautification of Jackson Bay in Leu. Speaking on the project on API's morning SVG program on Monday, Finance Minister Camilla Gonzalez says Jackson Bay will be transformed into a more beautiful area where people can visit and enjoy themselves.
That it's going to be absolutely special. And there's a school right there. We're going to do a little work with the school. There's a river that sort of comes down into Jackson Bay. It's really picturesque. We're going to work on the river. We're going to work on the school. We're going to beautify the beach. We're going to do a little clean up. We're going to work with the fisher folk. Uh, we think it's going to be really special. That begins this year? That begins this year. That begins um, this quarter. It's, it's going to, before, yeah, somewhere around March, we're going to actually start doing work on Jackson Bay. The first thing we'll do is, is it going to run into next year? No, it'll be finished this year. Finished this year. By the end of this year, Jackson wow. Bay will be done. So that's going to be done in time for Sandals. It'll be done in time for Sandals, but, but and, and what we did in the budget, we said, look, there, there, there's Sandals, there's the Marriott, and there's the Royal Mill in Ratha Mill. These are three major resorts that are coming. We want to make sure that we have magnets to draw people out of these resorts so they don't just come and stay there. Mm -hmm. So Leyu and Barley, which are close to the, the, the Sandals and the Marriott, we're going to do a lot of beautification work there so that people don't just come and stay in the resort, that they'll come out and, and spend some time in the town. And similarly in Calico, we're going to do some work there to make sure that people leave Royal Mill and come down into Calico and enjoy themselves. This year is Jackson Bay, yeah. and, and next year will be Calico, but this year is Jackson Bay and we're going to do a lot. A private entity had previously submitted an application for a jetty at Jackson Bay, which was rejected by the planning division after a series of protests by residents. In other news now, a lecture on customer service was delivered on Tuesday, January 17, 2023, to members of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. The lecture delivered by Jean Johnny Finley was done at the Old Montrose Police Compound. It was the first in a series of lectures on the RSVG Police Force calendar of activities for 2023. During her presentation, Johnny Finley touched on several areas including internal customer service, police approach and tone when dealing with members of the public, police dress code, customer service before, during and after a, a report was made to the police, the responsibility to respond in a timely manner to reports from members of the public. A wide cross-section of police officers, including Con Commissioner of Police Colin John and other senior ranks were in attendance of the lecture, was facilitated by the Public Relations and Complaints Department. In more police news now, uh, we hear that um, the Major Crimes Unit has made a breakthrough in the Boxing Day murder in the Pauls Avenue. On Monday, January 16, 2023, Tevin Bob, a 26-year-old laborer of Otley Hall, was arrested and charged for the December 26, 2022 murder of Mikhail Charles of the same address. Bob is accused of shooting Charles about his body with a gun on a boxing day in Pauls Avenue. Bob appeared at the Serious Offenses Court for arraignment and was remanded into custody at His Majesty's Prison pending the commencement of the preliminary inquiry. Meanwhile, the police say during a routine checks at the Grenadines Wharf, officers attached the port's intercepted uh, motor vehicle registration PE35 driven by Jermaine Andrews, an 18-year-old of Kane Garden. A search was conducted on his person and the vehicle, and one Glock pistol and 24 rounds of ammunition were discovered. Andrews was cautioned and taken to the Criminal Investigations Department pending further inquiries. He was subsequently arrested and charged with the offenses of possession of an unlicensed firearm and ammunition without license issued under the Firearms Act. He appeared at the Serious Offenses Court today, Wednesday, January 18, 2023, to answer to the charges and pleaded not guilty. Bill was granted in the sum of $12,000 with one surety. He was ordered to surrender all travel documents and reports to the Central Police Station every Monday and Thursday between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. Stop notices were issued at all ports of entry and exit. The matter was adjourned to Wednesday, January 25th, 2023.